the JDM K20A PRB head, also the same as the Type R. We will talk about the core shift and the necessary things that you have to look for, and also our our way of porting and the solutions we delve into and try to get the best out of this casting, with a little bit on valve to throat ratio and many more. Now here's the PRB head. You can see the ports are stock and actually quite clean, you know. It has way better core shift than even the B series. Obviously because these are new. You know, when we compare to the B series casting and even the D series. Now here's the exhaust side and we will talk about the core shifts and what we don't touch or we try to avoid by me by you know because it will make it worse and also on the intake side so we will get to that in a little bit and we will show you the pictures of how it is stock you know and on this photo you can see the part before the valve seat the core shift creates a ledge or you know an abrupt change right and we're gonna get into details on that and show you and actually edit the video and put some arrows on where I'm talking about or what I'm talking about. So let's go. As we go back to this shot, you can see here there's a ledge because the core moved a little bit to the left. And of course the valve seat is referenced to the valve guide, so that's more centered than the ports. And here's a closer shot and you can see clearly the core shift is towards the left, you know, I mean, it's making space there, but on the other side, it's just fine. I mean, like the port wall to the throat or the, the seat is consistent. There's no ledge, right? And on the, the exhaust is the same thing, but this time the port seems to move a little bit backwards down to the bowl and you can see the ledge is a little bit more centered. But the thing here is that if you decide to clean that up, you're going to increase cross-sectional area. And that's when you start losing torque and then requiring closer gear ratios and it's just never-ending cost, right? Especially with a single overhead cam. They're more drastic. Now let's head to the porting bench with a carbide session, right? All right. We usually start on the roof well you know it's just something that i got and kind of used got used to so let's go let's speed it up so it's gonna it's not gonna take long all right yeah all right I'm shaping it you will find certain bumps or ridges whenever you make a pass and that's when you start smoothing it out but do not take too much material away you know that's called hogging it out and we lose torque all right now on to the floor we start smoothing it yeah it's gonna look really really good now then we turn it again now it's for the bowl all right and we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna show you the carbide finish before we go to the 80 grit you know just so that you guys know each step of how we do things. Now here it is, freshly cut with a carbide. As you can see, some areas are left untouched. This way, we don't go overboard on the cross-sectional area, you know? All right, now let's look at it closer. Here we go. Here, you can see now we've started shaping it to the desired contours that we want, you know, that we're shooting for. 
for better airspeed and torque generation. All right, we'll do something that's never been done before. We're gonna go back and forth with the picture of the stock and the carbide cut. This way, you can visualize it on your own and understand it a little better than just words. Now onto the exhaust ports. We go with the carbide and start shaping it and we'll show you a little later on how the shape has taken and what we've left out so that we're not hogging it out, right? Now we keep going and we're gonna speed it up now so that it doesn't get too boring, all right? We're gonna keep going and get the shape that we desire, all right? going good now all right and and the thing is we always do it in this sequence and we just got used to it so bear with us all right now here we are the fully carbide finished exhaust port not just finished you know just I mean we're done with a carbide you know all right now we can have a closer look in just a little bit Hold on, let me get close. You'll see. All right, here we are. Now you can see the shape has started to become really, really good, like in an efficient way, you know. So you're gonna see it's gonna be really, really good once we get done with the 80 grit. All right, before anything, our ethyl alcohol and soapy water mix. We're gonna spray on the intakes so that when we start hitting it with the 80 grit it starts to clean up well all right we always do that all right let's go now it's 80 grit all right yeah now we're gonna get the shape okay wait all right let's speed it up now you guys might get bored sooner or later so let's go time lapse it takes practice to get used to the sequence but as soon as you guys start hitting the 80 grit make sure the way you port it or grind you have the flow in your mind because remember flow doesn't have eyes it'll just go by the feel and by doing this you'll start taking the approach differently and properly now on to go to the port flower okay we go do this to continue little by little and then okay let's go faster now and as you can see the port shine is starting to get really really good and you can as you notice we spray the ethyl alcohol bit by bit whenever we feel like it needs a little bit more because if you don't it'll just start to spread out dirt and grime this is why it's it ends up really clean you can see it right it's gonna be really really good and now we invert it to get the bowl and you'll see now it's starting to look really really good and we will show you later when we're done with the 80 grit we will show you the difference and how it's gotten good now all right later you'll see when we take a picture of it you'll see how the bowls started to look really really good and remember we're just using 80 grit right you'll see how a proper lubricant can give you a really really superior finish and now we are finished with the 80 grit and we've got done washing the head you know so now it's gonna be clean let's look at it closer so you can see the changes and then later on we'll compare it from stock to the carbide cut and to the current state all right now look at that you can see the port sidewalls the transition to the bowl is really consistent even here you can see the divider and the bowl it's shaped really well and not too much you know and on this other side you can see it and the thing here is that if you remember earlier there's areas down the throat that we didn't touch with the carbide 
remember because when you clean it up you will no longer see it but you can just go too much or just get a little overboard on the cross-sectional area you know and let me talk about that we usually go for 88 to 89 percent throat ratio from the valve to the throat sometimes 90 percent and only on high power turbo applications do we ever go 91 percent and when you think about it let's do the math here on a b series it's 33 mm right so the 89 percent of a 33 mm is 29.37 mm and then the 91 percent of a 33 mm is 30 mm you see how close that is you know it's just it takes just one pass with a carbide or with a sanding roll and you're overboard right now onto the divider some like the knife edge the tip and some just like to leave it round and you know i'm not really debating on which one is better because there's more than one ways to skin a cat it's all about the differences in principle theory but let me show you this is called a tea tray in formula one it actually starts the airflow towards the diffuser all right now look at this they were selling this in 2015 the caterham floor bed you can see the divider is sharp right all right that's cool and this is a more recent gp2 you can see the divider and here's a more current one and then look at this mclaren during testing look at that and then look that is not a knife edge it's actually really really round right and it's you can see on this simulation how the divider is right it's kind of a bit round so anyways now going back to the intake ports we'll show you something that's never been shown before or usually they don't show it the short turn but before that let me show you the finished exhaust ports Ooh, they look really really good right now let me show you the better shots now here's the finished exhaust ports and you can see it's actually shaped quite efficiently so this is gonna be really really good and that means more efficient and that's good for more torque and actually not really a gas guzzler you know so let's do this now the carbide finished ports and then the 80 grit finish look can see the difference right and then on the intake this was the carbide finish or the status earlier on and then here you can see that looks really really good okay now let's go to the short turn and here now you can see the short turn it looks really good i mean if you look at it the transition from the throat all the way to the short turn into the port floor is not too abrupt and the thing is the better shape that you can achieve on this the better flowing head or ports that you've had or done here you can see the short turn it's really really consistent and the transition from the sidewall all the way to the valve seat is really good and you can see with a better light or proper lighting you can see the curve is really really good see that actually is gonna be really really efficient now this is actually capable of 300 wheel horsepower with the right cams on a k24 so actually this is my own personal head so if any of the local ones want to get this it's available it might just be the key for you to break into the 300 horsepower category you know and with the k24 head that we did you can click here because it's also available